This video is a demonstration of the Spatiotemporal Epidemiological Modeler's new model building framework. We will begin by looking at a demo package that we've created containing two scenarios, one for Cuba and one for Germany. They are almost complete except they are lacking a disease model. Let's imagine the disease model you want does not already exist, so we're going to create it. Select New, Create a Model Generator Project. And now you can create a new disease model. We give it a package name and prefix. Then we have to decide what model we are going to extend and what compartments we are going to include initially in our model. We will call our model Demo Flu. And let's start with an SIR model. Select Next. These are the parameters in the model and the compartments. You could add more parameters here, but you'll see how to add them later using the graphical editor. So now we are auto-generating all of the Java code and the new plugins for the disease model. And here you can see the compartments. We have S, I, and R. But let's suppose you want to add a new compartment. You can do that from this view by clicking the Add Compartment button. And we add a new compartment, E. We can drag that anywhere we like and change the size. Notice that the compartments we inherited from the parent model are locked, but the new compartment is editable, so it does not have the locked symbol you see for the others. Next we are going to need new parameters, so select Add Parameter. We have to add an incubation rate to define the rate at which people will leave the exposed compartment. We can give it a default rate of 0.5, or 2 days, and set a minimum value of 0. Later on in this demo, we are going to need another parameter called a modulation period, so let's create that now. Give it a default value of 365 days, or one year, and a constraint value. It has to be greater than zero. Select OK. Since we have just made a structural change to our model, we have to regenerate the Java code. Click on the Run Model Generator button. Then click OK, and we're running the code generator again. This has been sped up a little bit for you. The new Eclipse plugin is getting regenerated and injected into STEM at runtime. Here you can see the plugin. You can actually open it up and look at the Java source code. In particular, look at the class file with expressions in the name. Next, let's create an instance of the disease model we just generated. We'll call it flu. Select the disease model combo and you can see the new disease model has appeared on our list, so the program has it right away. Give it the name flu. Transmission rate of 1.2. Infectious recovery rate of 0.3. Immunity loss rate lets use 0.05. You can put in whatever values you want. You can also fill in the Dublin core, describing your disease model, and it's a good thing to create that. And here is the new instance we have created. Next we have to add the demo scenarios that I showed you, so we can open the models folder containing the models defined inside our scenarios, select the model for Cuba, and drag the flu into the model. Save that by typing Command S or Control S on Windows. Then we can drag that same disease instance into our model for Germany. Open the German disease model and drag the flu model into it. So now both models have our new disease, and you can open up the scenario to check and see that the disease model is enclosed. We are not quite finished yet, because we still need to define where the transitions are between the compartments we created. We need to transition from S to E, from E to I, I to R, and R back to S. Next, let's select the mass action term from S to E. The change in S will be determined by the transmission rate times the number of susceptible times the lowercase i. That's the fraction of people infectious. The exposed people become infectious at the incubation rate times the number of exposed people. The infectious people recover at the recovery rate times the number infectious. Notice the type ahead feature. You can just type control space or command space on a Mac and the program will tell you what variables are available to type. 
For example, immunity loss rate times R is the rate at which people return to being susceptible. Let's add one more transition. Infectious people may die at a somewhat higher rate, so let's add a transition from I to disease deaths and specify this as the infectious mortality rate times a capital I, the number of people infectious. Finally, let's flag that mass action term as an incidence so the logger can later record that value, which is, after all, the value tracked by public health. So now we can go ahead and run our demo scenario for Cuba. Since we have created a vanilla SEIR model, sure enough, we see a single epidemic wave after which the system goes into a fixed point of endemic infection. Well, that's not really much of a seasonal flu, so let's go ahead and improve the model to make it change with the seasons. We can create a modulation variable by using, for example, a sinusoidal modulation in time. Once again, observe the code assist. Type command space to find the variable modulation period. And notice the red dot telling us we need a semicolon at the end of the line. The program is checking our syntax. We can then add the modulation variable to the new expression, which indicates the change in S due to this new mass action term. Now we can run it again. And sure enough, now we see an epidemic wave that now reoccurs every 365 days as the flu returns each season. That's all well and good, but suppose we want to use a more interesting function. Let's imagine we think seasonality of the flu is caused by changes in some environmental variable, such as the daytime temperature. We might use a logistic function, as shown here. So we can add that logistic function in place of the sinusoidal function that we tried at first. But before we do that, let's look at the Java class named Demo Flu Expressions to see the generated code. Look at the method for the transition from S to E, and you can see the original code created for our sinusoidal modulation. Now let's see what happens to the code as we type our new logistic function. STEM comprises historic environmental data, including temperature, which you can download from the STEM update site. As I type in the logistic function, I can use the code assist and just begin to type temperature and hit control space, and it will show us the temperature function. The function works if the dates in your sequencer correspond to the dates where we have data, 2001 to 2010. Here you can see the new code for the logistic function has been automatically generated as I typed it, and we didn't even have to regenerate the model, since just changing the transition rate is not a structural change to the model. So let's run the new code. There is bigger seasonal variation in temperature in Germany than Cuba, so let's run the German scenario. We now see a seasonal variation in the flu in Dresden, where we seeded this disease scenario with one infectious person. However, the disease is not spreading. Dresden is connected to the rest of Germany by these common borders, but we are only seeing the seasonal flu in Dresden, the one region where we seeded the flu. So let's go ahead and fix that. We can go back to our model, and instead of just looking at the fraction of infectious people in Dresden, let's type instead the function, effective of i. The function effective uses those common borders, or any edges in your graph, to mix the population between connected regions. This function allows the disease to transmit susceptibles based on effective population of infectious people. There are even functions in STEM to mix people by air travel. These mixing models are documented on the STEM wiki, which also explains how to create your own mixing model. So, now we have a periodic flu modulated by seasonal variation in temperature, and it is spreading across the country every 365 days. Once again, STEM has historic environmental data for the years 2001 to 2010, and you can download that data from the update site.